Welcome back to Lost Touch Channel. My name is Anton Vjeltsin. I'm an attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. Of course, when I make these introductions, I often forget that some of you don't know that I'm licensed in California as well as Nevada, and I often associate with local counsel in order to represent people outside of these two states. Now that we have the introduction out of the way, today we're going to discuss the federal sentencing guidelines. When it comes to federal court, any good federal criminal defense attorney knows that in order to get a good outcome at sentencing, we need to get the sentencing guidelines as low as possible. So we're going to discuss a case today that deals with Section 3E1.1, Acceptance of Responsibility Levels. And of course, before we discuss the case, I want to thank you for watching me on YouTube, as well as listening to my podcast on Audible and Spotify by looking for Joe Rogan Experience with Lostash. I'm just kidding. That's not the name of it. You can Google and find me on Collect Call with Lostash. That's the name of it. Or really, you can just Google Lostash because there are many attorneys out there, but only one Lostash. And so when you Google for my name, you'll find all the links. Let's go ahead and discuss the case. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from Lostash Law Firm at Western Region San Diego. To accept this call, press 5. To refuse this call, hang up now. Thank you for using Kinetics. You may start the conversation now. Today we're going to be discussing the Ninth Circuit case United States versus Justin Wilk, who appeals his 20-month sentence after being found guilty of counts 1 through 6. Let me be a little bit more specific. He was charged with eight counts. He chose to take the case to trial. And during the opening statements, his attorney conceded his guilt on counts one through six. And he only wanted to argue about counts seven and eight. Interestingly enough, the jury found Mr. Wilk innocent on counts seven and eight. And of course, they found him guilty on counts one through six. During sentencing, Mr. Wilk argues for two-level reduction for acceptance responsibility on counts one through six. After all, he did concede his guilt on those counts during the opening statements. The court denied those two levels to Mr. Wilk, saying that Mr. Wilk did not timely accept responsibility. He made the government prepare on all counts to go to trial. And so the government made a lot of expenses in order to prepare for this trial on all counts. We're now in the Ninth Circuit and we're dealing with the federal sentencing guidelines. We're looking at Section 3E1.1 that deals with acceptance responsibility levels. Now he's arguing under the Section A which deals with the two levels. You receive those two levels of responsibility points if the defendant clearly demonstrates acceptance of responsibility for his offense. And there's, of course, Section B. He receives an additional one level if he timely notifies authorities of his intention to enter a guilty plea, thereby permitting the government to avoid preparing for trial and permitting the government and the court to allocate their resources more efficiently. In this case, Mr. Wilk says that if you read Section A, it doesn't talk anything about timeliness and it doesn't talk anything about resources. He says that he should be receiving those two levels because he did accept responsibility. He conceded his guilt during the opening statements during trial. The Ninth Circuit says that he is correct. Because Section 8 doesn't talk about timeliness or the resources, he is entitled to those two levels. Of course, they remand the case to the lower court because his timeliness can still be a factor to see if he's actually truthful about accepting responsibility. But it is not a factor in Section A if there is elocution. And he does actually say that he's truthfully accepting responsibility. Even if we look at the commentary under 3E1.1, 
there is a number of items that the court can look at. One, whether the defendant truthfully admits to the conduct in the conviction, whether he voluntarily terminates or withdraws from the criminal association or conduct, voluntary payment of restitution matters, voluntary surrender to authorities promptly after commission of the offense, voluntary assistance to the authorities, voluntary resignation from the office or position held during the commission of the offense, post-offense rehabilitative efforts, and lastly, the timeliness of the defendant's conduct in manifesting the exercise responsibility. So as you can see, the last factor here is timeliness, but all we're trying to see whether he's being truthful about exam responsibility. We don't have to actually look on the legal side of things, whether he gets exam responsibility levels under Section A. He does that as long as he clearly demonstrates exam responsibility. I hope you now understand a little bit more about exam responsibility levels. If you enjoyed this video, Please click like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button so next time I post, you'll be first to know. And if you're listening to me on Spotify or Audible, please give my podcast a five-star review. Thanks for watching.